Hi, it's Penny here and today I thought I would take you through all the books that are on my TBR cart as well as some books that don't quite fit and I've left them off for certain reasons. I did try to fit this all into one shot but it's not going to work so whatever let's just talk through the books. So on the top here I do have the books that I am reading this month and then we get into kind of the fantasy ones and then I put non-fantasy-ish ones at the bottom. Let me put you over here so while I talk about it. That wind is annoying isn't it? Okay so talking through our fantasy books it's kind of hard let's take some off. Um, firstly I've got Red Sister by Mark. Lawrence this is the first book in the book of the ancestors series I want to say it's called it's about this girl named Nona who goes to assassin school it's like some kind of nun assassin school I've heard a lot of good things about it although since more people have started reading this maybe less hype about it as well as I did hear some negative things about Mark Lawrence so I'm maybe less excited about this now but I got this for free from the library free bin so I want to read it and I've got it. It's kind of a pretty cover so I'll definitely get to it at some point. Um, my goal is TBR zero by the end of the year so I guess I'll be trying to read all of these this year. The next book we have is Child of the Flame by Kate Elliott. This is the fourth book in the Crown of Stars series which I am trying to read The Burning Stone which is the third book in February so I guess then this one will be one that I could pick up and read. They're very thick. They've got a lot of text like quite not tiny but fairly small text. Um, I do really like this series it's quite complex. I have seen it compared to Game of Thrones and it's similar in that you've got different people vying for the throne. You've also got these dragon people coming across the sea and causing problems. Uh, there's dark elves and dark magic but at the same time like our main characters that we're following are younger characters and so it's not quite as brutal as Game of Thrones although some pretty dark and brutal things do happen but it's not really written in the same way. I will admit that I struggle to get through this series a little bit and I can't quite put my finger on why because I do really enjoy it but I just think the writing is quite dense and so it's not a fast read and because these books are so long I end up feeling a little bit discouraged that it's taking me so long to read but hopefully I can get through more of that series this year. Then as well I have the first two books of the Jaren series. I don't actually know if it's a duology. Oh it looks like it's a trilogy as you would expect of a fantasy so at some point I will need to try and get my hands on the first book. I have actually in the past read book two when I was much younger and then I managed to get my hands on the first book so I want to read the first book and then reread the second book. Um, I don't really remember what the series is about like looking at it they're spaceships but I think when I read the second book we had this young girl who was kind of living with this nomadic clan on this planet and the the space stuff came as kind of a surprise to me even though like the story does say that this woman is from like a more advanced civilization. I guess starting with the second book is never a good idea but anyway I don't know much about this but I I think it's just like a clash of cultures but seeing that these maybe civilizations that are maybe less advanced technologically maybe aren't behind this other civilization in all ways. Yeah, who really knows? I need to read those. I should start putting some of these back in here or this is gonna be a mess. Okay as well I have Libromancer by Jim C. Hines. Uh, something about a guy who's a librarian and also does magic. This is the first book in I think quite relatively long series. I've also seen Jim C. Hines talked about a lot. Uh, since picking up this book I have heard that maybe it's a little bit misogynistic or a little bit sexist which doesn't make me super excited about it but still I like books with librarians in them so I do want to give this one a go. So fingers crossed I guess. Um, as well I have Wizard of the Grove by Tanya Huff. This is actually a bind up of two books. One is Child of the Grove and the other one is The Last Wizard. Again I really don't know much about this. I've read this before recently but I don't really remember. Um, I actually think I read Child of the Grove again back in my teens early 20s but I've pretty much completely forgotten about it and so I'm interested to see when I pick it up whether it jogs my memories. I have read a lot of Tanya Huff stuff before that I've really liked and I really do think this cover is beautiful so I got it for that reason. As well I picked up the Dragon Nimbus novels by 
Irene Radford. So this is a bind up of three novels so I probably will pick it up in three pieces because otherwise this will be a lot to get through. It's like a thousand pages and the writing is tiny. I don't know anything about this either other than I assume it's got dragons in it since it's called the Dragon Nimbus novels. Mainly I picked this up because Irene Radford was an author that I remember in my 20s thinking I wanted to pick up and read some stuff by her. I honestly don't remember why anymore because my early 20s were a long time ago but regardless I want to pick this up. Again I got this for two dollars from a thrift shop. A lot of these I got secondhand and super cheap which is why I pick them up even when I don't know that much about them. Then I have Spirit Wolf by Mickey Zucker Reichert and Jennifer Wingett. So Mickey Zucker Reichert wrote I think the Chisuli Chronicles which I really enjoyed again back in my early 20s um, and so when I saw this at a thrift shop I wanted to pick it up. It's just a standalone I'm pretty sure and I think we're following this girl who's like spirit linked to a fox and maybe she's also some kind of healer. Honestly one I picked up because of the author so I don't need to know much about it to hope that I will like it. Then I picked up this one Rasolka by CJ Chera. So CJ Chera is an author I've never read but I've seen a lot of people say is good one, a good author. And I know that a Rasolka is like a, a Russian spirit, ghost, some kind of Russian mythology. So I was interested to see a story with Russian mythology and see what that's like. Again, 50 cents I think this one. So I am interested to pick it up but I also like the writing is tiny. A lot of these older adult books had the most tiny writing. So even though it doesn't look that long, I think it's actually kind of long. And then lastly on the shelf we have Ballad by Maggie Stevada. So this is the second book in the, what is the series called? It doesn't tell me. That's annoying. But it's like a dark fairy story. I think the first book in this series was Maggie Stevada's debut novel. Then she wrote the second book and then she never finished the series. Uh, now it's so much longer because this was published in 2009. Uh, she says that at this point she would write this story so differently. She doesn't really know how to write the third book. And I think you can definitely see it in this. There are hints of the way that Maggie Stevada writes now but she's really evolved her style since then and I know if she rewrote this she would write it completely differently. So I really don't know how she would write that third book. But I kind of wish she would. And it's almost okay because in this we're following two humans who get involved with these fairies and it's all kind of musically based. And I'm pretty sure, so the first book was told from the girl's perspective, this one is told from the boy's perspective, and then the third one I'm sure she was gonna have it told from the fairy perspective. That's my guess. So then would it really matter if it was told in a completely style because surely a fairy would have a completely different perspective on things. That's my argument anyway. Um, I am somewhat frustrated I've taken so long to get to the second book because now I've forgotten a little bit about the first one. But at the same time I'm kind of just reading this because I'm so close to having read all of Maggie Stevada's stuff that I feel like I just want to read this one to be able to say I've read them all. Uh, and it is really interesting to see how her writing style has evolved. Okay so that's the top shelf. Let's move on to the bottom shelf which is going to be much more mysterious for you because you can't see it coming. Firstly I've got Someone Like Me by Emma Carey. I don't know anything about this except that I really liked The Girl With All The Gifts and The Boy On The Bridge by Emma Carey and so when I saw in the secondhand shop another book by them. I don't actually know the agenda. Anyway it doesn't matter. I want to pick this up and it's kind of an interesting cover. Then I have The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I got this for free from a random campsite that had a box of books you could take. Um, it's about a bunch of friends that used to like lie and try to see what kind of pranks they could pull on people and now they're adults and they're having to deal with some of the consequences from that I think. I do want to read more thrillers and I would like to try some Ruth Ware so I will definitely get to that at some point. Uh, then I have Flight of the Fantail by Steph Mataku. So this is a book by a Maori author. Some kind of teen horror I think. I want to read more books by Maori and Pacific authors. That's one of my goals for this year. So I'm excited to get to this and I'll probably be reading some more books from this publisher because they're one of the few I could find that focuses on Maori and Pacific authors. Uh, I also have Blaze 
it by Stephen King. I think he actually published this originally as Richard Bachman and it's some kind of thriller. Honestly so many of these books I've forgotten what they're about now. But it's like a relatively short Stephen King so I thought it would be a good way to read a little bit more Stephen King without having to read all his really massive tomes. Then the next couple of books I have here are both from the same series. So I've got Vortex and Catalyst. I'm pretty sure that's the order they go in. These are the final two books in the trilogy which started with Insignia. So it's set in this world where there's a war happening but it's happening out in space and these teenagers drive the spaceships through connections with their mind so they you know at a distance they control the spaceships remotely uh, and the reason why teenagers do it is because they basically have to put these chips in their heads to be able to do it and only teenage minds are adaptable enough to take these chips without losing their minds. I did think the first book was really interesting the main character isn't exactly likable and so I'm really interested to see how she will handle that in the next two books and where everything with this technology and this war will go. So again I'm really annoyed that I haven't got to that yet. I also have The Time Machine and other stories by H.G. Wells. I've honestly put this on my TBR multiple times and not got into it. I really like time travel books so I want to read this. Why have I not gotten to it? I always end up deprioritizing it for some reason. As well I have The Martian by Andy Weir. I'm not sure if I want to really read this but I did enjoy the movie so I see this like everywhere in secondhand shops and eventually I just picked it up so I guess I'll try it. Ooh, that text is tiny but I have heard a lot of good things about it so why not. Then I have Blindness by Jose Saramago I think is probably how you say it. Uh, this one is another one that I want to read because I've seen the movie and I really love the movie. It's a story where everyone in the world just starts going blind and they don't really know why and we're following this doctor's wife and she for some reason doesn't go blind but she pretends that she does so that she can stick with her husband and the movie is very intense and some really horrible things happen so I'm really interested to see what the original source material is like. Uh, as well I have Pixel Juice by Jeff Noon. This is another one I've put on my TBR multiple times and not gotten to. I think it's a short story anthology. My sister gave me this one and that's what she's told me. But I did look at it and it seemed to have like a prologue. And I've never seen a short story anthology before with a prologue so I don't know if that's even what it is. And then lastly on this cart I have Quazzle by Ellen Dean Foster. I honestly bought this one 100% for the cover. It's got these weird little aliens like trying to figure out things in a normal human house and I think it's just like a humor science fiction. It's also got this cool little flick thing in the corner which I always like. I guess um, once upon a time those were common in books. Not common but like a special feature have a little flip thing in the corner. You don't really get that anymore. Anyway I don't even know if I like this but um I just kind of wanted the cover to exist in my house and in my mind. Okay so those are all the books on the main cut. If I can get through all of those then I will count myself as having been successful for TBR Zero. But what we're gonna do now is go through this other pile of books that might fall on me if I touch it too much like that so let's not uh, and just talk about what's going on with them. So these are all books where I haven't read them. I own them but I haven't read them but I'm not counting them as part of TBR Zero so I just want to explain why I guess. So at the top of the pile I have two books from the Rainwild Chronicles book three and book four. Because this is book three and book four and I haven't read the first two books for yet I feel like I can't read them technically but also I'm probably going to read the first two books in audiobook form and so then I think it's pretty likely that I'll read these two in audiobook as well so I'm not counting them as part of the TBR. As well I have a whole bunch of books from the Dragons of Pern series. Now as part of my other goal to read books from series that I've got in progress I probably am going to read most of these however I might try and read as many as I can via audiobook and I'll probably also end up having to read some in ebook form or maybe physical form if I happen to have the right one but there's a lot of books in this series. I just have these four and one more that's right at the bottom of the pile so I don't know if I'll have the ones that I can't get on audiobook if you know what I mean. Anyway I do want to continue this series even though I find them a little bit hard to get through um, but it's just I've read 18 books in this series so far and also uh, Anne McCaffrey died sadly and her son took over writing these books so I'm really interested to see what he does with the series and whether I will like those more or less. Either way I'm not counting them as part of my TBR I'll try and read them as part of catching up on series. 
I also have Black Powder War by Naomi Novik. This I think is like the fifth book in the Temeria series. Fourth book? Fourth book in the Temeria series which is all about like these dragons that existed in Napoleonic times uh, so they were part of the wars back then so it's like an alternate history with dragons. It does sound really cool I'd love to read it but I'm not gonna start with the fourth book. Then I have a whole bunch of the books from The Wheel of Time. However I'm pretty sure that the first one that I have is book seven. I only got these because they were all a dollar each at this charity book fair and I wanted to support the book fair so I bought all of these but I haven't read book one yet. I don't even know if I'm going to like this series. So it may have been a terrible idea. However, the later books in the series, one of these ones, this one, were written by Brandon Sanderson. And I do really love Brandon Sanderson. So probably I want to at least get up to some of the Brandon Sanderson written ones. I think it's going to be a bit of a journey. And it's not a journey that I'm going to embark on this year. Because I've got way too many other series to work on this year. And it's probably a journey for next year. But if I do decide that I love them or I do decide that I want to read them physically, at least I have some of the books. And I supported charity by buying them. So like, it was worth it. Oh, here's the other Dragons of Pern one that I have. Uh, as well, I have Prudence, which is book one in the Custard Protocol books. So this is like a series in a bigger world of series and... Even though technically you can start with any series, I looked it up and what is the one that you're supposed to start with? The Parasol Protectorate is the one that everyone says you should start with. So I'm not going to start with this series. So technically it's the first book in a series, but it's not the first book of a, a bigger series. But I didn't realize that until after I bought it. But I'm going to keep this in case when I do get to this series, I love it. But as I'm not starting any new series until I finish the ones that I've got in progress, I won't be reading that this year. Another one that I have is Darkest Night, which is book four of the Warriors series, which is all about these like cat warriors. To be honest, I don't know if I'm ever going to read that series. It's like a middle grade series. All the characters are cats, so I guess that sounds like something I'd like, so maybe I'll read it. But really, I just bought this because I wanted to have a book with cats on the cover on my shelves. Is that a good reason? No. I do also need to take off this plastic because it's an ex library book. I got this for free, so I just picked it up because it was cats. That's a terrible reason. I don't know if I'll ever read that book, but it doesn't count for my TBR. As well, I have Heir to Seven Waters. I think this is another fourth book in a series. I do want to continue this series this year, but whether I'll really get to it, I'm not sure. Uh, the books are quite long or relatively long. I did really like the first book in the series. What's it called? Daughter of the Forest. Uh, it's kind of like a Seven Swans retelling, so this girl isn't allowed to speak until she's woven these things for her brothers that have been turned into swans and until she's woven them her brothers won't be turned back from swans and it's like really painful the things she's weaving it out of and at the same time she gets kidnapped in the middle of all of that anyway i liked the first book i was surprised i liked it but i really liked it and so i do want to continue it i think the rest of the books in the series follow like her descendants or something also, Juliette Morellier is a New Zealand author, and I like to support New Zealand authors. So I'll definitely be continuing that, but it's only the fourth book, and I need to get my hands on the second book to continue. So it goes in the pile of probably not for this year, but I might catch up as part of my series journey, so we'll see. Then I have three more books here from the Crown of Stars series. So this is the final book in the series. So there's seven books. I am trying to finish off three this month. Will I get to the next four this year, given that these are all massive, like they get more and more massive, and I know that I read these fairly slowly? It seems unlikely, so I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm not committing to read them. It would be nice if I got to them, but reality isn't always nice. Then lastly, and this book is getting slightly damaged, it is Beyond Ragnarok by Miki Zakarakut. I've read stuff by Miki Zakarakut before and really enjoyed it, but this book I think is one from a later series in that bigger series. It's another one where there's there's trilogies, but they build up to a bigger series. So this is volume one of the Renshai Chronicles, but I think before that was also the Renshai Trilogy. And I think I looked it up and there's also like a duology that comes in the same world before that. So I don't want to read this yet, but I still need to figure out what other books I do need to read before I can get to this. Anyway, not for this year. So the summary of that is that 
not including the books that I'm hoping to read this month, I have 21 books on my TBR cart and 10 months left to read them. So if I just read 2.1 books off my TBR cart every month, I should be able to read all of these. And since I'm planning to pick three books off my TBR cart to read every month, we should do it with time to spare and maybe we can even read some of these other ones. Maybe the rest of the Crown of Stars trilogy? Anyway, that is all the books on my TBR cart. I would love to know if you have read any of these books, and I know a lot of these are books that aren't often talked about, but if you have read any of these, I would love to know whether you like them and whether you think I should read them. I'd also love to know if you think they're terrible, because then I'd be able to unhaul them, and I wouldn't have to read them, but I could still get them off my TBR cart. Still, I would say most of the books on this cart at the moment have lasted through quite a lot of unhauls from this cart to get me down to 21 books. I think at the beginning of last year, this was well over 100 books, and so I've made really great progress. I want to keep making that progress in whatever way I can. But anyway, that's my TBR cart. Let me know what you think about it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.